post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis as the topic, and we'll abbreviate it PSGN. And uh, PSGN is the most common um, type of uh, glomerulonephritis in children, and usually about 5 to 15 years of age is the age range of the patients that are affected. And the causative pathogen is known as group A beta hemolytic strep. Now there's fortunately a, a special name given to this type of uh, streptococcal pathogen and it's strep pyogenes. Now you might be a little confused by all this group A beta hemolytic, what is that all about? Well without going into too much detail because it's not a really a pharmacology lecture I'm just going to illustrate that there's a few categories of streptococcal uh, pathogens. There's alpha hemolytic and there's beta hemolytic. And when you take this uh, pharmacology course, you'll understand all of these terms. But right now, I just want to show you the classifications. Alpha hemolytic has two types of strep. There's strep pneumonia and there's strep viridens. Beta hemolytic strep also have two kinds. There's the one that we are going to talk about today, which is strep pyogenes, which is known as group A. And then there's, as you can deduce, a group B, which is strep agalactia. So I just wanted to illustrate the fact that there's classifications involved in strep. There's uh, beta hemolytic group A, uh, strep, which is strep pyogenes, and that's the pathogen involved in post-strep GN. So how would you um, identify this in a patient? Well, as you can deduce from the name post-strep GN, it basically occurs after an infection with strep. So most commonly either pharyngitis or an episode of impetigo, which is uh, a rash. And after uh, some time, usually you're looking at about 6 to 21 weeks after this uh, initial infection, the patient then develops post-strep GN. If they develop it, it would be approximately this time frame after. And the reason is because what happens is the post-strep GN is occurring because the Antigens are essentially attacking the kidney. They cause a glomerular damage, and the glomerulus is basically a component of the kidney. So that's a very important part of the history uh, presentation that they had uh, approximately one to three weeks ago. They had some sort of a infection, either a skin rash or pharyngitis. So what are the symptoms? Well, a lot of these are related to the kidney damage almost half uh, or half actually of the uh, patients will have hematuria and then their urine will actually be a, a very characteristic color it won't be the standard yellow uh, color it's described in many ways sometimes it's described as tea colored or cola colored I've seen it described also as brown or smoky and that's very characteristic of the urine appearance in post-strep GN. In addition to hematuria, the patient will also have protein in their urine. And other symptoms or signs on physical exam will be edema. And then they also will have high blood pressure because of the kidney damage. Now, the diagnosis involves some very important tests. Well, the first thing, of course, is the history. You know, talk to the patient about what exactly happened in the last month. That will give you some clues. Next is a urine analysis, and that's checking to see if there's blood, red blood cells, and protein, which should be a very diagnostic clue for you. Then, of course, you check the kidney function, and this, of course, will give you an indication of the renal failure, or renal insufficiency that's involved. Now we get to the very important specific tests. There's something called anti 
strepto lysin o level. Now what this is is that strepto lysin o a, is essentially uh, this level is essentially talking about an antibody made against the toxin produced by streptopiogenes. So you have an antibody that's made against the toxin produced by streptopiogenes. And remember, streptopiogenes is the pathogen involved. So in the case of post-strep GN, the anti-streptolysin O level will be elevated. The body will make a lot of these. The next uh, very specific test that uh, I need to discuss is something called a complement level. Now the complement level, for those of you who don't know, the complement is actually a part of our immune system. And the complement system is the part of the immune system that helps us with our antibodies clear pathogens from our system. And what happens in post-strep GN is unfortunately these complement levels are decreased. So that's a very important part of the diagnostic workup of post-strep GN. And then if necessary, although rarely done, you can do a biopsy of the kidney. So I'll just put that in then, if necessary. So these are very important tests. Treatment, interestingly, there's no magic cure. A lot of it is just supportive. And what I mean by that is you treat the symptomatology, you treat the blood pressure, you treat the edema. And then because the patient needs some sort of a restriction, um, you will restrict protein because they're having this proteinuria. And fortunately, if the supportive treatment is implemented properly, the patient will regain normal uh, renal function within a percentage of about 85 to 95 percent of cases. So that's uh, good news. So the prognosis is excellent. So now let's take a look at a couple of clinical vignettes. Seven-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department by his mother because of tea-colored urine for the last several days. He has also had some nausea and vomiting, and his eyes appear swollen when he wakes up in the morning. The eye swelling tends to resolve over the course of the day. He is generally very healthy. He has no family history of any chronic diseases. Temperature is 98, blood pressure is 130, pulse is 96, respiratory rate 16. Physical exam is unremarkable. A ewer analysis shows red blood cell casts. At this time, the most appropriate study to conform your diagnosis is. Well, um, he definitely is in that age category. The tea-colored urine is a, probably the biggest clue in the, the clinical vignette. The swollen eyes talk about the edema. And not much else, really, that tends to scream out. But generally speaking, you always want to go for the simplest tests first instead of so the the renal biopsy is probably not the simplest test so that would probably be out ultrasound is expensive uh, it's an imaging study a simple test when you have a suspicion of glomerulonephritis and in particular a post-strep glomerulonephritis which would present with tea-colored urine would be the anti lysin O antibody. So that's the answer in this question. And then finally, seven-year-old boy presents the pediatrician because his mother noticed a smoky color to his urine. Upon questioning the mother, it is revealed that the child suffered a sore throat several weeks ago, and that was left untreated. Physi physical exam reveals hypertension and a mild generalized edema. UA is significant for red blood cell casts, which of the following microorganisms is responsible for this child's illness? Which of the following is the microorganism responsible for this child's illness? Well, 
It's a very good question. They give you all these straps and you're supposed to figure out, well, they're all straps, so you can deduce that it's post strep GN, but which one? Well, like I said uh, before, there's two categories, it's alpha hemolytic and beta hemolytic. And each of these is broken down further. Alpha hemolytic are strep pneumo and strep viridens, and beta hemolytic are strep pyogenes and strep achalactia. Strep pyogenes is known as group A, and strep achalactia is group B. So post strep GN is caused by group A beta hemolytic strep. So that would be strep pyogenes.